So welcome everybody. We're gonna get started officially in a few minutes. For those of you who are here now, welcome to this book talk on Love Unveiled by A.H. Almas, which is the pen name for Hamid Ali. And my name is Amelia. I'll be doing the technical aspect of hosting today. I also have my colleague here, Stacia, and she is as Stacia Support. She's waving her hand now. So with that, I would love to turn things over to Hamid. Hello, everybody. Good to be with you. It's afternoon here in California, so it must be very late in Europe and other parts of the world. So to begin uh, today, I want to do a little meditation and that is simple, few minutes meditation. You close your eyes and you feel your breathing. And you're breathing from the center of the chest out. As if you're not just expanding your chest, expanding your whole chest, all three dimensionally, like out, like in a sphere. Gently, not too hard. And exhale gently. Just expanding our heart in all direction. And I'll end the meditation with the bell. This talk was originally planned to be in person, but things changed. As you know, we had the virus, the coronavirus, and the social distancing. That's why it is now online on Zoom. So more people can join this way. That is one advantage. But it's different than in person, the way it was planned. It was planned as a book talk. At that time, the world was the old world. <laughs> the world that we want to have again. Since then, it's been changed by a little, tiny little thing, like a virus brought the world to its knees and created all kind of disruptions and difficulties, pain and suffering, illness and death. So we've been living in that and impacting people in different ways. And I'll discuss how the topic of this talk might relate to that, might help with dealing with that. At the same time, here in the U.S., we have all the protests and demonstration for, say, racial equality, which is many of us have been impacted by in various ways. 
intense thing in the U.S., which actually spread in other parts of the world, as far as I know, because the question of racial inequality exists in many parts of the world. It's, uh, think of it as a really a human phenomenon. You know, America is different because racism has the history of slavery. Other part of the world doesn't have, most countries don't have that history, but there's still, you know, races and discrimination and the inequality of different kinds, which of course won't happen if the people in power had true hearts. The people in charge had true hearts that we want to talk about today. Because this book, this talk is about the, the content of the book that came out a couple of months ago, Love Unveiled, which I thought of it as a first part of a series of three books about love. This one, Love Unveiled, which looks like this. Love Unveiled. And uh, there'll be a second book after, hopefully next year, and a third book, a series of three books discussing love in many ways. Because I've written many books. Some of you have read my books. My books, usually, my previous books, I have written things that nobody writes about. That's why I wrote them. <laughs> I didn't write about books because many people write about, about love, I mean. But this time, I decided to write about love to show how is love understood and the path and the teaching that I teach and I put out in all those books. So an important thing uh, to understand first about love is that most people don't really know love, not the way it is described in this book. Most people understand love in an emotional way. In, in, in their relationship, whatever, I love you, you love me, I like you, I want you, you know, I want to be near you, and, you know, all, all kinds of you know, familial, you know, family love, uh, romantic love, and, uh, friendly love, all kind of love. And we think of it just as love, it's all one love, and sometimes it's passion intense, and sometimes it's soft and all that. But we feel it as an emotion. Most people know love as an emotion. And of course, the emotion of love is good because it's better than frustration or anger or aggression. It's more positive. But that emotional love is usually an attached love, has attachment to it, has grasping in it, has jealousy in it, all that is part of the emotions, the human emotions of the emotional heart, the emotional level of heart. But the heart has another level that is not emotional, which is spiritual level. And that's what this book about, is to take love into the spiritual level. When the spiritual level really shows what love is and how the emotional level is just um, a mere reflection a kind of reverberation and sort of an outer expression and most of the time distorted of what love really is. When I feel love, when I know I'm experiencing love, I'm full, I'm rich, rich of goodness, full of abundance, sweetness, overflowing generosity, selfless, unattached. But also, 
many kinds. You see, when people talk about love, they think it's love, it's one kind of thing. Even spiritual people, when they talk about love, they just talk about love. But no, but rarely you find somebody writing about what's it feel like inside. What is it? What's the experience of love directly? What is when the love is in the heart? What's it taste like? What's it? What's the, its texture? What is its flavor? What is it just an emotion, just a feeling? That's how most actually poet, most spiritual people actually talk about love. Sometimes they say consciousness has love in it. Consciousness can be loving. And that is true. We're getting closer to what love is. That it is a flavor of true consciousness. But consciousness doesn't mean just consciousness or something. We're seeing the presence of consciousness. So here, first of all, in, in this book, I am both trying to show what spiritual love is like, which is what is the true prototype, the true human love is, what's the experience of it like, and also to show there are, there are different, different kinds of love, that the heart has many kinds of love, not just one kind of love. So we can't just make it a general blanket statement, there is love or there isn't love. Oh, love is fullness and sweetness and leave it at that. That doesn't do justice to the rich and beauty, rich heavenly world of love. You know, one teaching, the Sufi teaching, they say that the difference between a human and an animal soul, if it's a talk, talk about the animal soul or the human soul, and that the human soul has heart. That's what distinguishes it from the animal soul. They don't say the human soul is distinguished by mind. That is not what distinguishes it. And you probably know that. You know many people who have good mind, but they still function from an animal level, where survival, you know, and power and fear and all of that is what rules the world, what rules their life. So that, the, the most of you have that heart, that's the emotional heart, where you can experience love, you experience joy, experience happiness, but it's also full of anger and frustration and fear and jealousy and envy and all that kind of stuff. And there's a spiritual level, and there's none of that. There's only pure love. Pure goodness. And we realize we, when we experience true love, spiritual love, we see that what we have called love is sort of a kind of a reflection, a mirage, an imitation of the true love. We think of love as loving somebody, liking being near them, doing good for them. Giving toward them. And that is part of what real love do. But that doesn't say exactly what love is like. These are the outer expression of love. What is love in itself? And that is what these books are trying to do, to get into the essence of love, the deep spiritual level of love where our human kind of heart is an outer expression. It's actually the human heart is mostly the heart of the ego self, the sense of self that is an ego that is patterned by things in the past, 
patterned by belief and ideas. While true love has nothing to do with history, has nothing to do with that. It is, it's spontaneous, natural, and free. And inherently good, inherently non-attached, inherently non-grasping, inherently selfless. First of all, I want to say that love in some sense has two sides. The side that has to do with compassion, with tenderness, when you feel when you are aware of the difficulty or the pain or the suffering of another, then there is a tenderness, a gentleness, and a desire to help, to alleviate. That's the compassionate side of love. And then there is the loving side of love, the side of heart. There is a compa- and the compassion can be seen as a kind of love, really, because it is loving, it's a source of love and kindness. It's a love that's more the kindness. I'm going to talk about love that most people talk talk about, that care about, that they want. Love that is not just spiritual, it's a spiritual needed for the spiritual path, but it's also important for our life and for dealing with situations of our life. Love is pure goodness and sees the same goodness in others. Love is part of our spiritual nature. It's our spiritual nature manifesting through the dimension of the heart. And spiritual nature expressing itself through the heart And spiritual nature sees itself as the spiritual nature of all beings, all humans, regardless of race, color, gender, whatever. So the idea of inequality doesn't make sense from the perspective of the true heart, of true love. The idea that there be racial inequalities, what's that? I mean, like I was thinking the other day, people said... um, talk about uh, black life matters. And of course, it's true, it does. And it is the right kind of banner these days. But at the same time, I felt we shouldn't have to say that. Why do we even need to say it? It's obvious, of course, black life matters. Why do we have to say it? That's because for many people, it doesn't. That's why it needs to be said. But in reality, if everybody understands the situation, we don't have to say black life matters because everybody knows it, it, it matters. It need, doesn't need to be said. So in my mind, when I hear it, it's already in it. It's a sign that there are some who don't see that. If we all, the, all the human race, see that black life matters, brown life matters, matters, yellow life matters, white life matters, all of it life because all of it is spiritual life. It is the same spirit, the same nature, which at the depth inherently pure goodness and perfection, we're at the same. We're not only the same, we're all connected. Love makes us one. That's what love does. It brings people closer. It it makes people come closer, nearer, more connected. So as you see, if we really have true true love, of course we want equality, racial, economic, all kinds. But also, if we have love, we're also at the same time will care about other people. We don't want other people to have a difficult time. So we, won't, we don't want to expose them to a virus that can harm them, that can kill them, that can get them sick. We will be careful. We will follow the true guidelines of distancing that the experts are telling us. So that could be a moral thing, but if you really have heart, you do it out of heart out of caring, out of compassion and love. And if we really have uh, our heart is open and we are by ourselves at, at home, we, we don't feel our aloneness is not painful. 
There is no distance because the heart is open. We connect it to others just naturally. We connect our spiritual nature, which is richness, which is fullness. There is nothing missing. But also we feel connected to others naturally. And we could talk with them on the phone or the, in Skype or Zoom. The connection right there. Right now, for instance, I feel I'm connected to you, to all of you. A few hundred of us, I feel that there is a natural connection that has nothing to do with distance, nothing to do with shape or color or anything like that. We connect it in the heart because we are the, the same spiritual nature. But what is love again? Love on the spiritual level is not an emotion. It does have an affect, like emotions do, like emotions have an affect, uh, good or bad, affect of jealousy, an affect of anger or fear. These are called affects. There are affects in the spiritual heart. However, the affects of the spiritual heart is of sweetness, goodness, and happiness. And also, this affect is the affect of our spiritual nature. It's the affect of spirit, spirit appearing through the heart with a particular affect. And spirit appears as a kind of presence, as a kind of fullness, as a kind of richness that fills the heart. Here I want to get into the different kinds of love, because that helped me explain or put out what I mean by real, essential, spiritual love. I want you all to know it if you don't. I want you all to feel it. Because if you feel it, you'll be happy and you'll want others to be happy, naturally. I naturally want everybody to be happy. In fact, that was my New Year resolution, was to add to the joy quotient of the world. I didn't know that the world is going to need it that much. It's always needed it, but these days it really needs it a lot more. So hopefully we'll all add to the joy quotient of the world by feeling our heart, by our heart being open to its depth, to its truth to its richness, to its generosity. So the first kind that I discussed in the book is the love that has to do when, with, when you feel that you like somebody, that you like them, you enjoy being with them, and you appreciate them. So it's an appreciative feeling. And the, the feeling is a like, the affect is of a liking. Liking and enjoyment of being with an appreciation of the other for who and what they are. Their differences and their similarities, appreciating them for that. And this love, when you feel it inside, I'm, I'm just talking about how it expresses itself, but when you feel it inside you, you feel your heart as if it is opening like a pink rose as a fluffy pink rose, opening and folding with, with softness, with, with lightness. And actually, when it fills the heart, the heart feels like it's full of pink cotton candy. Sweet, like pink cotton candy. You're actually like my heart right now is really like a cloud of cotton ca candy. But the cotton candy has a body to it, has a fullness to it. It's not empty. It's not an emotion. It is a presence. It's a healness. So love in the liking kind, what I call the pink love, the personal pink love, when you like somebody and you appreciate them, we know it in the emotion level, but I'm telling, I'm trying to show it in the 
spiritual, fundamental level, which is a fullness of the heart, a fullness of the consciousness, and the consciousness is imbued, is full with a kind of hereness, a fullness, a presence, presence that makes me feel I am here. I am my, I am what I am. I am my true spirit that is here, recognized for what it is, but now appearing in the form of pink love. So it's a presence has many qualities. Presence can be, has no qualities. That's how most people recognize presence because they, they see that the presence of consciousness. However, however, presence can appear through the heart as love. And, and one of the kinds of love that we really mix with all other kinds. Here I'm sort of distinguishing it so we know it more directly, is that we feel softness, melty kind of softness. It's like uh, cotton candy that melts in your mouth and the taste of the sweetness, but the sweetness pervades the heart, pervades the consciousness, pervades the whole atmosphere. And this, the... The, the texture is like cotton candy. It is soft, it's delicate, uh, but it is there. It is something that is there. It is not just a response. It's not just an energetic emotion. No, it's more than energy. It is a presence that fills you. You feel rich with, 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 love, with the pink love. You feel full. You feel sort of enriched. And this pink love, which is a one way that love manifests itself, is uh, personal, has a personal quality, has a liking quality, an enjoyment quality, and a sense of a sense of presence of being, a fullness, almost a substantial presence that fills the consciousness, fills the heart, but fills the whole body, the whole consciousness, can fill the whole room, can fill the whole city, can fill the whole universe, depending how expanded you feel it. And when that, when you, you realize, oh, that's why I feel like somebody. This is the, the, what makes me feel like somebody. I like so. This is what makes me feel I I'm happy to see somebody. That makes me feel happy that and I and also feeling I don't need to be loved. I already have the love. I am love. One of the big issues about this love, why it's difficult for us to feel it, is that many of us feel we were not loved, or not loved completely or enough. There we have wounding, deep wounding and deep hurts for not being loved or loved adequately and completely. And that is one of the things I discuss in the book. I discuss what are the uh, things that arise, the issues, the histories, the obstacles to experiencing these presence of love. Because we need to work through these things, understand them so they'll be out of the way. So for the heart to be free to manifest its nature as a different kind of love, as this kind of pink personal love that has to do with liking and enjoying what we love. And and the liking, and not just a person, you could like somebody, you could like your... your uh, dog or cat, you could like your iPad. It's the same love. You could like your food, you know, you look at your food and say, oh, I like, I like, it tastes, I like it. But you see, if you have the pink love in you, it's not only the, the taste of the food that you're feeling that you like, you, there's also the taste of the love and the heart that is filling the mouth, filling the face, filling the whole consciousness with softness, with delightful, uh, happy, uh, presence that is pure, pure goodness, pure lovingness that has no selfishness of whatever. The purely, it, and it is just the nature of spirit that arises that way. It's not my love, it's the nature of spirit, it's the nature of your spirit. You have the same kind. 
interesting thing that we find in this teaching is that everybody can experience the different kind of love. There are inherent potential for all human beings. It doesn't matter where you're from, what your culture is, what your race is, what your gender is. These are part of spiritual nature. We all have the same spiritual nature, and we all have the potential to experience this kind of love. We might have different histories about it, whether we loved or how much and what way and all that, and whether there was love. Some people don't have much love the way they grew up. They They lived with dryness and emptiness or even aggression and abuse, which make uh, the experience of love difficult. We don't even believe that we can be loved that way, or we can love that way. But people confuse that with another kind of love. Another kind of love, when it manifests, you can feel the expression out of it is, is you want to be close. You want to be connected. You want to share things with the other person. That's another expression of love. It has to do with sharing, connectedness, with the kind of uh, being closeness, intimacy. It has a sense in it of nourishment, uh, of a goodness that nourishes. This is what I call the golden love. When the heart is full of a delicate, soft, fluid, golden nectar. Transparent golden nectar. Like a light honey with the sunlight going through it. Beautiful. Not only beautiful, it melts you. When you feel the golden love, it melts. Its main thing is melting. We call it merging love because when you feel it with somebody else, you feel as if you're merging with them, that you and them are connected, you're connected, you become one. The consciousness merge because the boundaries are melted, are dissolved. And the feeling in the, in the, in the, in the, in the golden love is, has a sense of melting, of a goodness that melts, that melts the heart, that melts the boundaries, that melts the separation, that melts the differences, make us feel connected in a very profound way. So that what brings connection, what brings appreciation for community, what brings appreciation for togetherness, for one, bring in the appreciation and desire to be as close as possible. We could feel it as a group, a sense of community. It happens especially in couple relationship when they feel they're so connected together. They're so bonded. It creates a kind of bond. But the bond, when you feel it, is when you, it's not just an emotional bond. That's the outer expression. When you feel the true love, the golden love, you feel it as a uh, kind of a liquid, like a, a pool, a golden pool, pure, uh, like a, a golden light, but has a, a viscosity, has a fluidity, has a substantiality. It's a little denser than the pink love. Pink love is like, has a density of cotton candy. This one is almost not as dense as honey, lighter than honey. Almost half the density of honey. So it's a light, fluid, golden pool or nectar. So when it's there, you feel as if your heart is a pool of beautiful, I mean, I can hardly imagine the kind of beauty that you see when the merging love comes, and it comes through the surface, through the eyes, through the skin. And it's like 
you're dripping with some kind of sweetness, not sticky, but so sweet. I mean, the kind of sweetness as the heavenly sweetness. I've been trying to understand where is the sweetness on this earth? Because many of the kind of tastes we have in the spiritual nature have something corresponding to them. And the in the spiritual world, in the physical world, like the pink candy, the pink love feels like pink candy, the taste of it, the sweetness of it. But here, the sweetness, I couldn't find a corresponding kind of sweetness in it in the, in the physical world. So I'm thinking, well, maybe it exists some other planet. There's some fruit or some kind of juice that exists somewhere else that has this flavor of sweetness. It's really heavenly, really delight. All the loves have a delight and happiness. But this one, but you see the distinction. That one is personal and directed and appreciative. This one has nothing to do with appreciation. It's more like, hey, we want to be together. I want to be close. I want to connect. I want to tell you about me. We want to share. Let's become a community. Let's become a, a bonded. So the appreciation of bonding, the importance of connection and bonding. And in it, this bonding has a sense of nourishment, has a sense of abundance, has a sense of uh, fullness that is ever giving. It is the kind of love actually that the mother feels with her infant child. If she really allows herself to feel her heart fully. It's the, li it's the love that is needed for the infant child and its mother or mothering person when it is held, when it is loved. There is the child, that's what it needs. Need needs that kind of love first before the pink love. It needs this golden love that makes it feel nourished, held, taken care of, almost mothered. Feeling of held and taken care of and uh, with a nourishing kind of bless, uh, bliss and a blessing, a nourishing blessing. So the merging love tend to be fluid and liquid like, and has that full, that pres the presence, it's a presence, that's why it feels liquid like, it's like substantial presence means almost like a, I like a physical thing, like a, a material, but it is not a physical material, it is a spiritual material, spiritual matter. That's what presence is. You're feeling the nature of consciousness and the nature of spirit through the heart and feeling it here as a golden love. Many people think love is golden, and this is really the golden love, but there's a pink love too. The third kind of love that I bring, I talk about, is very different quality, different color, different taste, different uh, affect, different uh, expression. It, it is more, it feels, it has to do with when you feel passionate and wanting and desiring in a passionate way. We know that especially in a special love when we are in love or a mother with her child feels like, I love you so much, I can eat you up. There's a passion and strong. That's not pink. That's not golden. This is what I call pomegranate, zesty, ecstatic love. That's the kind of love, that the third kind that I, I discuss in the book. And I discuss both how it feels, what's it like, what's it next mean, what are the barriers to it, and how to work the, through the barriers. So this love is the fullness of the heart that appears as, again, fluid. Similar to the golden love as a fluid, uh, it's like pooling in the heart and the soul. But the color is the pomegranate and has the, the flavor of pomegranate juice, deep, zesty, uh, tangy, sweet, pomegranate flavor that makes it feel both intense and passionate 
and ecstatic. So this love is, has to do with the ecstasy of being in love. People feel sort of ecstatic when they're in love. They don't know what it is. They just feel excited. Where is it coming from? It's coming from this pomegranate kind of love. So it is, what can I say? I mean, this is a, a sort of a kind of love that many poets talk about. Because that's the love that we can feel the, our divine nature, that people feel toward God when they feel passionately wanting to be near to the beloved. Where does the passion come from? It's not emotional. It is this zesty, ecstatic kind of passionate love that wants to be uh, the one devour, that want to be devoured, that want to be dissolved into the beloved. Do we to want to be that love the beloved so much that we want the beloved to eat, to take it in completely and dissolve it deliciously? So if we really experience this, we experience a kind of, uh, uh, I call it ecstatic, passionate love. Because there is in a, a sense of ecstasy. The pink love is not ex exactly ecstasy. It's a pleasure. And it is a delight. And it's an enjoyment. But here, it's intensely ecstatic. And the ecstasy is passionate. You can't say the pink love is passionate. You can't say the golden love is passionate. But this love is passionate. And so it's passionate without it being emotional. Imagine a presence that fills the heart, that fills the soul, that fills the being, that fills the consciousness, that ha is the very essence of true passion. But the true passion here is the passion of love, not just passionate anger or passionate hatred. No, these are distortions of passion. The true passion is love, is ecstasy of love. Not it is the, the primary force that impels us toward the divine. When we want enlightenment, we want union with the divine. What is it that impels us? Our, our longing is not just, it can feel soft and sweet and yearning, but it needs at some point to become passionate and consuming. And this consuming, consuming, Passionate love uh, dissolves us into the beloved, and the beloved can appear to us, and we can be one with the beloved, which is the divine within us. So as you see, an important thing about love is that it is a presence of spirit, presence of true consciousness and a heart qualities. I describe three kinds of love. The pink, liking, appreciative kind of love. The golding, merging, melting, nourishing kind of love. The pomegranate, zesty, passionate, ecstatic kind of love. There are really different kind, different qualities of our spirit appearing. Each one is its own thing, distinct. We, you know, but people talk about love, they think it's own, and they just, their heart is loving, and sometimes it's passion, sometimes it's melting, but they don't know. And that has to do with different qualities of spirit that are emerging, that is affecting them. I'm talking about what is affecting, what is, what is the ground of all those emotional kind of love. Where do they come from? We're talking about the very essence of love. And when you feel all these love, you feel them as something that fills the heart, that fills the consciousness, that fills it almost, almost like a substance, almost like a, a material thing that is material of light. It's like liquefied light, liquefied spirituality, liquefied spirit. 
And the and the pink love is not exactly liquid, it's more fluffy. And the merging gold is more flowy. And the uh, pomegranate love is more bursting. But the other kind of love that I don't mention in the book, because the heart has many kinds. Has for us the fulfillment kind of love, where you feel fulfilling, fulfilled and complete and rich in your heart and fulfilled in your being, fulfilled in your life. That is more like what I call pomegranate, uh, apricot love. It feels like apricot juice, the most heavenly apricot juice, much tastier, much more fragrant than a Blenheim apricot. Just giving you an example of the other kind that I mentioned in the book. I mentioned the kind of love that most people sort of know something about from the emotion level. The other kinds are usually not known well in the emotional level. So the pink love, the, mer- the golden love, and the pong love are the three kinds that most people know reverberation or an ex- emotional, or more know them on the emotional level, and they want them and they like them. Like, you know, as a child, you wanted to be loved in the emerging gold love and the, in the emerging, uh, the golden melting love at the beginning because you want that nourishment, that sense of being taken care of, the sense of being held, the bond that is nourishing. But at some point, you want to be liked personally for who you are. That's the pink love. At some point, but also you want to be passionately wanted. You want to be loved with passion, with a ravishing kind of love. And you sometimes feel that way. You love somebody ravishingly that way. In fact, that ravaging love, you can feel it not just about people, you can feel it about your dessert sometimes. We have apple pie a la mode, for instance, or flan, and you feel, oh God, I finally got it. And you can't wait to become one with it. You want to eat it up or eat it up. The same thing with, with a lover. When you see your, your, if you have a lover and you're really, truly in love with them, you want to ravish them. You want to take them. You want to get close to them. You want to touch them. You want to eat them up. You don't want anything left. At the same time, all these affects and expression are has their counterpart, their source, and actual presence, actual beingness. When you feel those color of love, you feel there's something here. There's something emerging in my soul that taking place and filling the, my consciousness, filling my being, pervading my atmosphere. And it's interesting that when we know love on the spiritual level, we know a specific taste, flavor, texture, viscosity, density, all of that, each one of them has a different kind. Because all these are different expression of presence, presence appearing in the heart. Presence is what spiritual, what spirit is. It is a actual real hearness, the presence of being, the being of your consciousness. But here appearing through the heart, instead of appearing through the mind as a clarity and awareness, and appearing through the mind called consciousness, clarity, awareness, intelligence. And appearing through the heart, it is compassion, tenderness, and love, and fullness, and gratitude, and fulfillment. These are, these are the heart, the qualities of the heart, the quality of the spirit as it appears in the heart. So like what I want to do now is that as we, you probably have some recognition, some taste of one of those, or at least some 
if not the direct taste, the direct recognition, the experience, some how you know it from your emotional life, what kind of love you have experienced, or how kind of love you have wanted throughout your life from others, or from your parents, or from your kids, or from the people who love you, from your friends, and the kind you felt. With you and by yourself and yourself toward nature sometimes. Sometimes you feel toward the divine, toward God. And these kind of love are very important for the spiritual path because you need that kind of love to activate the soul, to move, to be full of the fire that moves it toward the spirituality, toward the spiritual depths. The pink love is the loving the truth, loving the divine, loving the mystery. And the merging love is wanting to merge with it, wanting to be one with it. And the passionate love is the one that passionately wanted to do, devour you, want to love to take, take you in and, and melt you. And it happens in ecstasy. Like you are eaten up ecstat ecstatically. As you are eating up, you feel ecstatic delight. I, I know what they are for the spiritual uh, path, and they really help the spiritual path uh, a great deal because help our spiritual practice to have hearts. And different kinds of heart, as you see, each one has a different function. It does something different to our soul, to our engagement, to our practices. But also, uh, as you see, all these are important for life because this has to do with our relationship with other people, with other things, with nature, with reality, with God. You can live with a heart like this, with our heart open, liberated, so it can feel its own juices, its own heavens. These, this is what I'm talking about, the heaven of the heart. The heart is, the spiritual heart is heavenly and full of delights. And but these delights are the very essence that makes human human. If we feel this kind of love, we, we see it as intrinsic to what we are as a human being, and you know it's intrinsic to all other human beings, we become true human beings. That's what the Sufis meant. When you have heart, you're not an animal anymore, you're human. That's the heart they meant. It didn't mean that you just have heart of fear and anger, anxiety and envy and all of that. They meant this heart. The heart of generosity. An overflowing goodness. And as you see, goodness of many kinds. Spirit doesn't come only in one kind, just vanilla. Vanilla, vanilla. No, it comes all kind of flavor. Just like ice cream comes all kind of flavor. And everybody they likes, likes different kinds. So is the heart appears in so many kinds of juices, so many kinds of flavors, so many kinds of nectars. Actually, love in the heart is, is basically a kind of nectar. These are the nectars of spirit. So what we want to do now is we want to listen to a piece of music. Now it help us get a taste and flavor directly of these kind of, instead of listening to me, I want you to listen to the music. You listen to my word, which speak more to your mind. Hopefully you're receiving me in your heart too. I would love that. I would feel welcomed. But here we want to listen to a music 
And the way you listen, the music doesn't have much graphic, so you want to have your eyes closed and listen to it and feel the music as if it is happening in your heart, in your soul, in your being, all of your body, as if it's filling it with the qualities of love. Because this kind of music I chose from an album called Sweet and the Loose. And it is about love of different qualities. And you might feel the different qualities. Don't try to feel them. Just let the music do it. Let the music be the love inside you. Let it become liquid. Let, it, let the music be nectar flowing, flowing through you. So it's not just you hearing it in your ears. You're hearing with your heart. The music become a fluid that is flowing in the heart. With eyes closed, we just listen to the music. And after the music is over, you just stay quietly till you hear the bell. I will end this meditation with a bell. And then we could have a discussion. And discussion that we have here, I don't just answer people question mentally. I show people how to access being, to access the spirit. You know, some people, they ask questions, they answer you. You could, you could get a reasonable answer. That's not what I want. I don't want to just give you a reasonable answer. I want you to have the experience. So when the, when the period comes of a Q&A, it is not a matter of just answering is in, in more information for some people. No, it is how to work, how to, to access. It's a demonstration of that. So we'll do that after the music. But first the music, and the music is over, with eyes closed, and let it happen inside you. Just let it do what it does. If it doesn't happen, it's fine too. Just let yourself... Feel your heart. Let's see what does the music do to your soul, to your heart. And do its thing. And after that, I will ring the bell. And then we'll see what happens. <laughs>
delightful so let's take a five minute break and we'll continue we know what's it like to deal with all life situation from a heartful place that all human beings have that love deserve that love All human beings are lovable. When, when your heart is full of that, with that love, to see the kind of violence that happens these days, that's so it doesn't make sense. That violence comes from a disconnection from the heart. You can't have that kind of violence or that kind of destructive quality if you have that kind of heart, if your heart is really open. If your heart is spiritually activated, and that's what we want to do, to activate the spiritual heart of as many people as possible. Because that, in my view, what will make true fundamental change. Otherwise, the change that we will have, they will be superficial. It will be based on something superficial. But change is good. Of movement is good. I'm all for it. But I just want us to come from a real place. So let's see. If you have any questions or thing you want to say, bring up or discuss or want help with, let's see. You can raise your hand and you'll be pointed out. Great. And so the way you raise your hand is if you're on the desktop or a computer version, the bottom of your screen, there are some icons, and one of them is participants. If you click on that, on the right-hand side of your screen, you'll see a list of participants, and at the bottom of that, there's a blue raised hand button. For those of you who are on the phone application, if you're called in, it's star nine. That will raise your hand. And if you're on the app on your phone, there should just be a button that says raise hand, a blue raise hand button. Or for a few of you with different uh, technology, it may be a more button and then raise hand. All right. So let's go ahead, we'll start. And we'll keep in mind, we've got about 45 minutes or so. And we've got about 566 people here. So keeping in mind space for as many of us as possible to join. Let's go to Lena. I'm gonna press the unmute button and you should see an option to unmute yourself now. Yes, uh, hello Hamid. Uh, I'm Lena, I'm calling from Montreal, Canada. Hi, I don't, I, I'm, I'm really delighted. Here she is, yes. Hi, Lena, Montreal. Okay. I'm really delighted, really, to be, uh, you know, with you and with the community here. And um, I have a very simple question, actually. 
Um, okay. When you were talking, I was really feeling this heart connection. I wasn't really in my mind. Uh, and I was uh, listening to you and I was feeling, you know, a delight, really. I was really delighted listening to you. And I, I mean, I was smiling, you know, you were talking, I was smiling, my heart, you know, was smiling. And uh, something strange happened actually when you put the music. Uh -huh. I, did, I didn't like the music. Uh -huh. And I felt that I was trying to rationalize, like saying, well, the music and ex in his expression of love and things like that. But I didn't quite resonate with it. It's not my kind of music. Okay. And we spoke about liking, but what happens when you don't like something? Mm -hmm. Like, like I, I didn't like the music. There are people sometimes, you know, you meet you immediately. There's a kind of like, maybe you don't know them, but you know, there's a kind of like a vibe or something yeah. that may or may not be true. You know, I don't know. Oh, there are many kinds of music, different people like yes. different guys. Yeah. Yes. And, and in as much as the music is non-conceptual, yeah. and but for some reason, you know, and I'm used to music, you know, I go to Sama sessions, you know, for yeah. some reason and all that, but I didn't like, uh, for some reason, I didn't like it. So yeah, okay. it's not liking. I would like really to explore it more. Yeah. So, what happened to the delight you were experiencing before? Um, there was a time, you know, like I couldn't really access it. Like I felt that uh -huh. I really had to sit and listen to it. Uh -huh. I didn't really, really like it. And when you said, you know, wow, it's delightful. I even, you know, had, you know, like... But but it's my truth. My truth is I didn't resonate with it. Well, your truth is different from my truth. I, yeah. I, 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 yeah. Sure, of course. So, not liking you know, what kind of music do you like uh i like uh traditional iranian music for instance uh, -huh. uh traditional arabic music i uh -huh. like classical music yeah okay like, you know, okay so yeah, that's kind of music i like those too yes yes <laughs> but the thing is that there's something for taste you know like when you yeah. said you know taste and this thing is not really uh it's, I can't explain it. Well, it didn't, it didn't speak to you. Well, that's fine. Yes. How, was, how, how are you feeling now? No, I'm, I'm enjoying the connection with you, actually, you very much. Okay. So the delight is back. Yeah, the light is oh, back. Forget the music. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying you should like it. You know, that's, uh, you know, I thought for some people who will, you will might enhance their experience or give them an open for you it wasn't so but you you have a delighted heart sounds great yes and i want to i want to mention one thing it's like um you know i've been in the work for some time and i i don't know like it's a bit embarrassing to say that i haven't been reading your books but i really felt your book you know i have it here you know the love unveiled uh -huh. and there was a time i was saying you know like it's strange that, but I even had you in one of my dreams, and you know, I was I was telling like I want to know what love is, you know, and and then you came up with this book, and I was like, wow, and this is actually your first book that I'm reading, and uh, thank you really very much for for writing it. So I, I feel met, you know, at at the place where I am now. It did. It came. It's timely matter. Huh? Yes. Thank you so much. Really. Yeah. Thank you so much. And good, uh, good talking to you. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. I'm, I'm glad that you like the book. Uh, yeah. I put it out for so because I'm sure it would be good for some people. So it's good for you. Oh, yes. It's very beautiful. And uh, really like, uh, I very much like, you know, when you when you, you started with the Rumi and yeah. then how you developed in this, this Rumi port and you started taking it level after level and you're going deeper and deeper and deeper. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, the, the approach. I found it uh, very, very uh, fluid. Well, I, I was really uh, unpacking Rumi. Yes. Letting people read the, the, the you know, listen to his poetry. They think they understand yes. what he says. Yes. But and what he says, there's so many subtle layers of yeah, very much. meaning very much. that I wanted to show some of them. Yes. So I'm glad you appreciated that. Yes, thank you so much. You're a lover of Rumi. Me too. Yeah, I read his Masnavi actually this summer and it was very uh -huh. happy. Yeah. I see. No wonder. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay, good, good talk to you. Thank you, Lena. We're going to go to.
Jennifer Asmita Clark. I'm going to press a button. You should see something that says you can unmute. There you go. Hi, Hamid. Hi, Jennifer. Mm -hmm. I hear, I'm here. You hear me? See um, me? I, I, I'm so grateful for this opportunity to speak with you. I think this uh -huh. is a wonderful um, opportunity. Um, my question is, is it possible to have light, a love without hate? I thought hate was the opposite of love. So if one wants to see the world in a, in a position of love, how does, how does one get rid of the hate? Hate is not the opposite of love. It's the absence of love. See, when love is not hate, it's not there, it's disconnected, it's possible to hate. When love is there, you can't hate. You see, hatred is when love is cut off and there is frustration and pain that develops into anger, aggression, and then hatred. It is so a reaction to a reaction to a reaction. But while love, it has nothing to do with reaction. Is the underlying ground. So some, many of us have hatred, and we have to and acknowledge it, understand it, until we're free from it. Then our heart can flower. So it's good you bring in the question of hatred. I actually discussed that in the book. Because love brings hatred, because people think love and hatred are opposites. But love and hatred are opposite on the emotional level. On the spiritual level, there is no hatred. There's only love. That's the real authentic level. That makes sense? Yes, perfect sense. Thank what you does so it make much. you feel right now? How I know what you feel. <laughs> my my heart is glowing. Oh, glowing. I'm yeah, full that's... of gratitude. Oh, you're full of energy. It's a glowing heart, huh? And you're glowing, your smile is glowing. That's nice. Well, thanks for sharing your heart with us. Your glowing yeah. heart. Yeah, good talking to you. Great. Thank you. We're going to go to Benjamin Ishbiger. And again, you're welcome to share where in the world you're joining from or to pronounce your name correctly, if I've done that incorrectly. Hello. Uh, it's Benjamin Hello. Eichenberger. Hey um, calling in from Switzerland. Switzerland. Yes. Hello, Switzerland. It's late at night, eh? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it actually is. Yeah, so Amit, I wanted to uh, share with you or ask you that at times I feel like uh, falling into an extension of, of law, like uh, feels to me like falling actually uh -huh. uh, into an a extension or a big, uh, almost like I dissolve in it or something like this. That's, uh -huh. that's okay. also what came up first when I listened to the music and the more passionate yeah. parts in the music that I felt again this falling uh, into well, so the falling it goes yeah. along with some kind of uh, dissolving huh? yeah it's like a passionate uh, it's like a passionate wish to to unite with something yeah yeah that's what passionate love is passionate yeah. wish to unite yeah and how, how does that make you feel to say that now? Yeah, I'm, I'm like, uh, when I experience it, I feel uh, the vastness, uh, I feel the mystery. Yeah. Uh, that sort yeah. of waiting <laughs> yes. on the other side. I can... Isn't that what you, what you passionately want to be one with? That beautiful mystery. Yes, yes, what yes. we call the beloved, the inner beloved. The beloved, yes. Yes, the beautiful, glorious mystery. Yeah, it's like a, a, a 
strong pull. Yeah. Yeah, strong pull. That's what it has in it. And, uh, the passion of love has a strong pull, like a gravitation or magnetism yeah. toward what you love. And it's good that you're feeling that strong pull because that's what's needed in the spiritual in the spiritual path. A strong pull. It's not just like I want it. No, if you pull, it's not just a choice. <laughs> no, there's a force happening there. And I like also the expression "the beloved" because I experienced this uh, strong pull actually in a love connection. Like yeah. with an actual beloved, I feel this strong, this strong pull with her. It's like for me. Yeah. It's a, it's so, a how about the dissolving? When you feel dissolving, yeah. is it okay to feel the dissolving? You comfortable with it? Very much, yeah. 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 So you like the dissolving? Yeah. I mean, what's the feeling in the dissolving? It feels like I dissolve with the beloved, and the, it's absolutely uh, mm, pleasant. Pleasant? Yeah. yeah. Just pleasant? Or very good? Yeah. It's, it's, uh, Is it delicious? Co comfortable, it, cozy, and... Uh, Is it delicious? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh huh. Yeah. That's what I thought. It's a delicious dissolving. So dissolving for many people is scary, you know. But when love is there, it makes it delicious instead of scary. Mm. So I appreciate you sharing with us that that kind of passionate pull. Mm. I didn't I didn't say it when I was talking, but it is part of actually. Of that kind of love. That and has it been us. for you as well that uh, actually a love relation yeah. uh, can be the entry into that? Uh... Yeah, it can appear in love as a human love relation. Exactly, yes. this kind of love yes. can be with the divine or with the human being. With the human being, sort of an intermediary. Uh, yeah. To the, well, the, the uh, other human is just a, another expression of the divine, just like yeah. you are. Beautiful. Thank you very much, Amin. For yeah, thanks for sharing your passionate magnetism with us. Thank you, Benjamin. All right, we're going to go to Yahui. And again, please feel to uh, let me know correct pronunciation or let all of us know. Uh, yeah, I'm in Boulder. <laughs> Hi there. Hi. <laughs> if, uh, yeah, I have a question. I feel sorry to ask. Um, I don't want to offend, you know, this teaching. I'm just curious about where is this love come from? Uh, you know, uh, for me, <laughs> for me, when you describe this, for me, like, uh, I know the, what is the pinky cotton, you know, candy. Uh -huh. You know that, okay. Love. I know that, you yeah, know, it's for me like, uh, I'm, I, I, you are talking something and uh, this is your experience, but I, I don't have that experience. Yeah, so you know cutting candy, you mean as a candy. But you don't know it as love. Yeah. Yeah, well, I imagine that cutting candy filling your heart instead of your mouth. I don't have to remember I have this love or... I'm I not saying you to remember, I said imagine. Oh, imagine. Imagine, yeah. Imagine that cutting candy instead of in your mouth or outside is in your heart. See what happens. It's good to imagine it. <laughs> <laughs> I see you smiling. <laughs> uh huh. You see, I just the imagination makes you feel good. I mean, yeah. what do you feel in your heart now? I feel happy if I huh? can have that. Okay, you feel happy. Well, you see, 
It didn't take very very much work. So you're you're open. Your heart is open. <laughs> you see, it's possible for you. Just a little imagination, and you felt it. It's happy. That's the, the quality of all kind of love is a happiness. I also want to know how other people's like you know for example, where did where did you experience your love? Did it all from the imagination or? From- no, it just emerged on its own. Okay. Just matter. I don't know. I was experiencing presence. I was experiencing presence because that's my work. Just being in the present of being. At some point, the heart started manifesting these different qualities, different times, not all at once. And for me, they were a discovery of something inside, like treasures in the heart. They were hidden. I didn't know about them. And the more the heart opens and matures, the more it reveals the treasures. So you beginning to see the treasures, feel the treasures. There is a lot more there. The heart is vast, big, it has many qualities and depth and vastness and bigness and, you know, it begins with pink and cutting candy and all of that. That's what I call the baby-like love. It's like soft, like baby skin. Okay, thank you for talking with me. I'm glad you brought this, you know, your situation and you see there is learning that happens. Thank you. Just taste it and feel that happiness and see and learn more about it. Okay. You're you're not happy accidentally. You felt something in your heart. Yeah. Wonderful. I like your smile. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Good. Thank you. All right. We're going to go to Pablo Mendix. <laughs> you now. Mendix in. Hello, Pablo. Hi, Pablo. Thank you, Amelia. It's Pablo Bendixson. I am calling in from Boston. Um, my first name is Hispanic. My last name is Norwegian, so it confuses me. What, what's your first name? Your first name, what do you say? Pablo. P-A-B-O-L-O. Okay. Pablo? Pablo, okay, okay. Pablo. Pablo. Yes, sir. Yeah. I'm, I'm okay. tuning in from Boston. Thank uh-huh. you for having me. So, Hamid, I wanted to share, first and foremost, an experiential aspect that I associate with some form of love. Uh Oftentimes, I feel what I would call a tug or a pull in my heart, directed towards someone that I am bonded. Yeah. And oftentimes, I find that with this tug, believe it or not, comes a correlation sometimes this person is either in distress because they are struggling Mm -hmm. sometimes maybe they have been thinking of me it could be a family member it could be someone i am intimate with but my question is the following i do believe in metaphysical properties to connection i think you alluded to this a connection can Mm -hmm. be felt yeah. And the distance, the physical distance between persons is no limiting factor between, uh, there's no limiting individual. Mm-hmm. So you're freezing. Let's see what else you say. It's true that, that there's a distance, no limiting factor. Just like as I talk, many people can feel the love, you know, that I'm experiencing, talking about, although there are many parts of the world. So your heart is sensitive. Correct. That's what it means. Your heart now, is sensitive. Now, where oh. I get... 
Yes, sir. Thank you for that. My concern involves the spiritual nature of connection. There is a saying that states that where there is love, there God is also. And you mention the beloved, and you mention a shared nature of a spiritual type. I want to know how I can come to make the leap from believing in metaphysical properties of connection because I am already there to bringing in space and room for God, for the divine. So what do you feel now in your heart? My heart has felt a little fluttery, uh -huh. a, little, a little fluttery. Good. Um, well, I mean, I'll be honest, you know, I have feelings for someone. And when I think of them, I, I feel those, those sensations. Yeah. But I suppose my question was, was more so about kind of a conceptual. Yeah, uh, I know. I, I will question. answer the conceptual, but now I know where is it coming from. If you let your, your heart flutter. If it's okay for it to be flutter, so let's see what happens. Mm -hmm. Just right now, let's let it flutter. See what 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 else besides flutter that happens. I feel more at peace thanks to oh. you. Yeah. Okay. I thank you for that. You help me feel more at center with myself. Okay. And you feel if you let the peace happen, what's the peace like? What does it mean to feel at peace? It feels good. Because the peace can be the absence of disturbance or the presence of peace. Which one do you mean? It froze again. Can you repeat the question, sir? I said the peace, peace can be the absence of disturbance or the presence of peace. Which one are you experiencing? Mm -hmm. That's a very good question. I'd like to experience the second one more so, but I think currently it's more of the first. Okay, so the stay cessation with that. Of disturbance. Very good. But what I'd yeah. like for ideally. Yeah, so you're feeling the absence of disturbance, which is a conquest what most people call peace, but a spiritual level of peace is actual presence. You feel the peace is here. It's possible to experience that. So the absence of disturbance is an entry into that. So your heart seems to have a sensitivity. It's possible for you to experience things just by you, me talking to you. So I'm, I feel good about what can happen for you. Well, that's very sweet of you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Hamid. You take care. Yes, sir. You too. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Pablo. We're going to go to Sandra Sieb or Sieb. Thank you. Um, first of all, I'm, I'm very moved because I never thought I would ever dare asking you a question, but I really feel I have to because it's something I've been, this topic of love has been really present for me for years and I feel the past six months I've come up, you know, even before you got the book out to my own classification of a different type of love. So uh -huh. you've just given me another language to understand what I was expressing. But I think what I'm struggling with is when I look at my current environment, there's a sense that something is lacking. I'm married with two kids. And I'm struggling to not feel bad and not making about me um, not loving well enough. Mm -hmm. um, 
because I, you know, I, I keep on feeling of maybe this is just my ego and my emotional need for more love, and um, and that I'm you no, know, I'm, I'm too greedy, and I think there's something better. But my 17 year old just yesterday told me because we, he was noticing some tension with my husband and I, and mom, there's nothing wrong, but it just doesn't feel like love, and that really just pierced my heart because it's really what it feels. There's nothing wrong, but it doesn't feel pink. It doesn't feel golden. It doesn't feel pomegranate. It just feels like nothing. And so I've got this belief that if I keep on working on myself and finding this pomegranate love, love with God, and I can fix this. Um, but I'm a bit confused, so I'd love to... Well, you can feel the absence of love in the environment and other people or in oneself. The absence of love is not love, but it's the absence. You're recognizing that something is missing, not there. The recognize something is missing, that means you know something. I mean, yeah. that's why you know it's missing. So when you feel it's missing, what do you feel is missing exactly? The warmth, a connection, uh -huh. I just feel very mechanic and yeah. As you know, so you you want healthy. some kind of a connection and warmth and a sweetness of relation. That you want the golden love. I do. You, you feel it missing. But I'm worried that this golden love is more an emotional love that's an ego self-driven love. Well, the emotion, so, you think of it that way, but even the emotion are telling us something about something deeper. Look at the emotion at the surface of the lake, the lake has depth. So what's what's happening in your heart right now when you talk this? Something is missing. Well, there's a deep sadness. Yes. It's okay to feel yeah. the sadness. It is. Yeah, feel the sadness. Your sadness, it's kind. So you don't let yourself feel sad. Something is missing, you feel the sadness. If you allow the sadness to happen, to happen freely, what happens to it? Does it stay more? Does it, does it get more? Does it move to something else? What happens? It moves to stillness. To stillness. I a, okay. I think there's a... There's a call to listen to the sadness. Okay, there's some kind of stillness. As you feel the stillness, stay in the stillness. Don't assume anything about it. Just feel, let it be. See what happens. Does it continue, become more still, or does it, uh, something else happen? <laughs> you no, know, it's almost like you've reached a plateau. I, okay. It's just like I, I feel I've touched the bottom of it and bottom. there's nowhere for me to okay. nowhere for me to look anymore. No, don't look, just let it be. So the stillness is there. So we moved from sadness, first you're feeling an absence of love, then you feel sadness, now you're feeling a stillness in the heart. That's nice for the heart to be still peaceful that way yeah there's a sense of peace of it just is yeah it's sad and it just is yeah just is peaceful if you just just stay with that peace with that stillness who knows what will next happen next because stillness allows other things to happen it is that the absence changed into an emptiness of stillness where the heart is still and ready for something else. Don't look no. for it. Just let it be. Let it do its thing. No, let your heart it. move the way it wants. My mind wants to look for something. It's okay, you felt it, you, you know, and so what's next? What are we doing? Are we staying? Are we leaving? We don't know and what's next. Is... You see, nobody knows what's next. So you don't try to guess it. Let so the heart coming. inform your mind. Mm. Your mind doesn't know. Yeah, that's, that's definitely true. <laughs> it can only describe what your heart brings up. Peace arose and your mind says it's peace. <laughs> but you yeah. knew it in your heart. That's okay. good. So, so things are moving. 
So there's something about something missing in your life about love. And it's good to acknowledge this. There's nothing wrong with you. You're just experiencing some something absent. And if you acknowledge it and you feel the sadness about it and that take you to stillness of your heart and you don't know what will happen next. But trust the process. Trust your heart. Mm. That's what I would Thank say. Thank you. You will see so what else your heart has. I shall stay in that stillness. Okay, stillness is wonderful. Thank you very I, mean, much. I love to be in stillness. <laughs> That's great. Peaceful stillness. Yeah, but it's I also. Wish, a I wish. It's this, also. A, yeah. It's also a stillness held by fear because you don't want to move. You want things to stay the way they are. Uh -huh. So if you stay still enough, yeah, you know, maybe it will pass. Yeah, it would be nice to have the stillness around the world. Yeah. There'd be more peace. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. We're going to go to Charlie Falk. Hello? Hey there, Charlie. Hi, Amin. Hey. So I felt, I actually, I went back to a place in the Sacramento retreat and feeling this sort of white cloud of, uh, you know, that sort of soft uh, something. And then there was, uh, in the, my memory, there was this sort of red stain to it. And then I was feeling the, the pink, the pink uh, softness. And when the music started playing, I started feeling mama, mama. I, I'm really very immersed. I'm at the computer too much and I've been totally immersed from the pandemic to the George Floyd thing. Yeah. From the pandemic feeling, I didn't realize, and my, it's my own thing also, but these people are dying with, you know, they're, yeah. they're gasping for breath and there's no one there. And so I, um, and it seems that it's opened my heart. In the, yeah, it moved your heart. Yes, you have a heart, so it moved. Yeah, and it seems to be something, uh, it's getting an education. There are a lot of beautiful black voices. I hear it's historians, people that are expressing things that are, they're getting that a lot of white people didn't, uh, just the sort of cultural racism they didn't know about. You know, the whole history of- Yeah, there's a, a waking up of sorts. Yeah. But to the truth of the situations has always been that way. Yeah. For a yeah. long time. So there is more waking up, which is good for everybody, I think. Because truth is what sets us free. And part of it is knowing knowing the history in the, the yeah. true way, not not the lies. Yeah. yeah. And also I, I'm also finding I recently in the last few years got involved with learning improvisational singing. Uh -huh. I noticed that music, there's many musics that have uh, this love, you know that you know there was uh, that. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you if you you know listen to music and you hear song, they're mostly about love, really. People, I mean, music and singing is mostly about love and love relations. You know, love is such a big thing for human beings. They've been singing about it and making music about it for thousands of years. It's rarely that people, you know, sing about hatred or anger. It's mostly about love. And they do sometimes sing about anger, but it's not the main thing. So it's good you bring that up, Charlie. Thank we you. now hear you. We stopped hearing you. Oops. Yeah, it's back on mute. Here we go. Okay, we'll go. We'll go to the next. Yeah. Thank yeah, you, Charlie. Here, here. Thank you, Hamid. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you. See, you're wearing, wearing pink. So I'm glad you'll be you you are impacted by the what's happening and you're having a human response to it. Appreciate that. Thanks, Charlie. 
We're going to go to Annette Cody. Annette, are you there? No, I mean, it sounds she's not hearing you. Can you hear me? Okay, Hi. here she is. Is that Annette? Yes, I mean. Hey. Okay, Annette. I just, yeah. I'm, I'm calling from New Zealand. Yes. And, and I just want to say thank you. Um, I'm just in awe of the love that came through the music with in this setting. It's just so moving. And I've never felt love quite like that. So thank uh, you. Well, it sounds it seems like you flooded with love, huh? Yeah. Tell us what's it like to feel that kind of love. It's really dissolving. And when the music was playing, I was aware of these shafts of um, light and colour through my heart that were like very piercing. Uh huh. Um, and I was aware of um, forgiveness. <laughs> it felt like forgiveness was arising in my heart for hurt that yeah. I was forgiveness. Okay. Yes. Uh huh. That's a hard thing too. Forgiveness. Yeah. So there was a real passion of um, the, the, the feeling. So right now my arms are dissolving and my legs are dissolving and I'm tingling all over. <laughs> Yeah. So what's happening now? Um, gratitude, melting. Um, Mel melting, awe. yeah. Uh-huh. It's just sort of, this kind of wonder. I mean, you are a few miles away from me, and, it, um, and it's just sort of kind of, um, you know, there's that happy thing that love is all there is. And I think, oh, yeah, right. Actually, <laughs> but now this is, my heart's resonating with that. <laughs> Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, I mean, uh, love, I think, is the most powerful force in the world. Yeah. Not all there is, but it is the most powerful thing. It moves people more than anything else. When the heart yeah. is open, it's really amazing. It also moves us on the spiritual search. It's the most powerful force, you know, that moves us. So right now it's dissolving my um, the inner aspects of my arms and my shoulders and yeah, so it dissolves. So that's what love does. It dissolves what we take yeah. as ourselves to be. Is it okay to feel it dissolving? Oh, it's wonderful, Hamid. <laughs> oh, so you're enjoying it. Oh, I want to give my entire beingness to it. <laughs> yeah, it feels like that's all there is that matters. Yeah, that's wonderful. I, I appreciate that. I appreciate you sharing with us your heart, your melting heart this way. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank melting you, heart that is melting everything else. And like nothing else really matters at this moment. Nothing yeah. Else. I mean, that's the thing about the heart, you see, is that most people know the heart and tell their emotions. And it is good to have emotions, right? And then we need to be in touch with our emotion because if we don't feel in touch with our emotion, it will be difficult to get in touch with our spiritual heart. Because the, the emotion in the, in the surface, the first layer, and it's good to be aware of our emotion, what they are, whether they're fear or they're irritations or there's conflict or is it... All, it's good to feel all of those and experience them, not reject them, let them be. And those become entries into the true heart, to the other layer of the heart, which is the spiritual heart, which then dissolves, dissolves in sweetness and in ecstasy. Causing lots of trembling now, and I'm okay to sit with that. Yeah. The shaking, well, melting kind of a thing. Yeah, I appreciate you being courageous enough to share with us what's happening. Thank you. Thank you, Hamid. You have a courageous heart. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what I call the lion hearted. Yeah. Not. A heart has many expressions. It can be courageous and strong, even though there's dissolving and shaking and all of that, but it's okay to be that way. 
So thank you. What about seven more minutes left? Shall we do another one, Hamid? Yes, one more and then. All right, let's go to Don Nix. Somebody has a burning question. Um, Hamid, it's Anne yeah. and Nix from Sonoma. Yeah. And Don and I oh, studied with you. Anne, Anne, yeah. good to see you, Anne. Yeah. Wow, it must be a good while. To see you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, as you know, Don and I studied with you for a long time. Yes, I remember. And, yeah, yes. And on June the 1st, Don left the planet. Oh, really? So I didn't I'm know that. So I'm now without, yeah, yeah. Oh, June, so, huh? June 1st, just yeah, recently. Yeah, just, yeah, recently. Oh, yeah. wow. How did it happen? So I, 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 yeah, I don't know. It, um, he had been going downhill for quite a while, and he, he was oh. reading about the Japanese death poem. He wrote a death poem uh -huh. not too long ago, and I'm going to read the last part of it. Okay. He said... Um, he said, I'm ready to make way for a fresh young soul coming to earth with excitement to experience the arc of a human life. I'm preparing to give up the earth and sail back into the glittering, living, and conscious galaxies where I came from and where I belong, truly belong, for all of eternity. So, you know, that was Don. That's so Don. Know, well, he knows know about that, so he's yeah. happy to go <laughs> yes. to that adventure. How are you doing, yeah, Guy? Well, I'm I'm kind of taking the the Tibetan idea of a bardo time for yeah. for me. I don't know about him, but me, the transition to being here on yeah. Earth without him. So I guess that's I don't even know. So how exactly, do you feel? Do you feel uh, lost for yeah. him? A loss of him? Do you feel your love for him? What is it you feeling? I I actually I don't. Know. It's just that I haven't been able to truly, you know, that I'm still kind of in shock about it. Yes, but uh, that's the first, do, the first response I'm, is the shock because yeah. it just happened, you know. Yeah, it's new. Yeah. Well, thanks for telling but, me. I appreciate knowing that. I, yeah. I love Dan and I love you. You know, oh, I've always loved you, and, and I, I, love I, I, I guess I don't know. I, I, I'm kind of wanting some knowing how to be with this and let it yeah i think that what, what i will do yeah. is to be with with yourself with what you're feeling yeah. and you might feel your connection with don both the loss and the connection and if yeah. you feel the connection you might feel him you might feel his presence yeah you might be able to feel connected to him yeah. because you have a deep connection it yeah. doesn't have to be lost just because he moved to the other side. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I'll, I'll just let it. Yeah, just stay with you. you know, how, how to be with know. yourself, yeah. with, your, with your heart. Yeah. yeah. Very yeah. good. Thank you. And, uh, uh, you oh, know, and you. I'm glad we got to talk. I can, I'm glad yeah, you told you. me what's happening. I, I wish him a yeah. uh, good. Uh, and exciting journey, glittering path. Yeah, I think, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I think he is having that. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds okay, like thanks. it, yes. Okay. Thank you. And thank you all for being here. Thank you so much, Hamid, for our time together and for everyone being with us. I put in the chat box how to purchase the book as well as a coupon code that's available through the end of June. Also, if you have any remaining questions, you're welcome to email us at outreach at ridwan.org. I'll also put that in the chat box as well. I think we have an upcoming event, don't we? Uh, uh, about Te the one that Tejo is doing, is, I think it has to do with some kind of love. Yes, we do. We've had a three-part series on yeah. love, and we've yeah. got one more coming up. Yeah. I think of that exact date. I believe that's coming up in July. I can yeah. check real quick. Mm -hmm. I'll look for that and put that in the chat box as well. Yeah. And Again, the recording will be sent out within this week for yep. everyone. And any final words, Hamid, you want to share with the group? Well, I think in the present time, 
and then what's happening in the world, the world has changed. I mean, the virus really changed the world in a big way, just like having an alien invasion. And then we have changes within our society, which is also a big changes that hopefully will result. I mean, the viruses bring problems and difficulties and change our liveness, not necessarily in a way we like, but we can wake up and might take us deeper into our self and see the value of that inner connection and the heart connection with other people. And also the new movement for equality, it seemed to be strong and moving and hopefully there'll be a true change. We don't know what kind of change, but I think it's in a positive way. And, and both heart is really very important. Love is very important. You know, the more love that we have, the more both we will behave lovingly in relation to other people and in relation to the virus. And also the love will help us understand the situation of having, having that all those the protests and the uh, passion behind it. What's it about? What's the history about? What's the suffering about it? The heart, the heart can help us appreciate that and, and see it in its true value. So I think love is useful for all human situations. And here it obviously is needed. That's all I wanted to say at this time. So thank you all. And uh, wish you well, wish you open heart, both inside you and for people around you. Thank you, Hamid. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Take care, everybody. Stay safe. Mm-hmm.